let's take a look at the software Astral Pixel Processor. Um, it's certainly new to me, and so this uh, this environment and this screen was all a bit strange. So I think it might be useful just to go over um, a few bits, just so you get a bit of a feel for how it all works. So first of all, when you open it up, uh, your process uh, console will open. So you just minus that down. That remains open because it shows you all the processes that the um, that the software has done. But you can open it back up again if you want to take a look just down here. But it does minus down, which is nice. It's not always in the way. <coughs> so this area here on the left hand side is the one where most of your work is going to be done, to be honest with you, most of the linear work. And then the the stretching, etc., and the uh, the DDP, if you wish to do it in this software, gets done over on the right hand side. Down here, down in the at the bottom, shows you all the files that you have open. Um, so it's all kind of quite nice and and it sort of flows quite well, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so first of all, let's consider load. So you click on there, and you have a working directory. Everything saves into the one place, which is a bit difficult to get your head around to start with. Because I like to keep my um, my calibration files and my main files separate, but you know I'm sure I can work around that. <clears throat> okay, so I just open up some greens. Let's just open up three or two of them. Okay, so you can see here they've opened up. You can see that they're they're down here. So this is basically where you have any kind of um, any kind of file opened up. Now, if you click on it, and then on the main center screen, you can see it opens up. So you can load in on flat, darks, and bias. That's where you load in your calibration frames. So I've got some calibration frames here, some masters that I've done when I was. Um, just sorting out some luminous data so I'll just use them so I'll just click on those and pull them in and as you can see they've now come in down here so you've got the bad pixel map the master flat and the master bias I will cover how to do those in a separate video this is just getting you a feel for the software and the environment that you're working in now what should, what happens when you start opening your calibration frames when you start doing things is <clears throat> this this frame has begins to get more information around it. So you know it's a light, it's light one and two, and it tells you where it is. The B behind it means that you've got a bias that is loaded up that is ready to be used. You've got a flat loaded up ready to be used, and you've got a BPM loaded up ready to be used. So as you do other processes, and then it starts adding different letters behind it so you know exactly where you're at. So the calibrate tool. This tab really is just to make your calibration frames. It's not somewhere where you actually calibrate your data. Um, again, these are things I'll go through separately on a, on a different video. One thing that is very, very good that I like is if you click on your light and you open it up, this is your linear image. And so you can see I've got some dust bunnies here. I've got vignetting. Um, you zoom in and zoom out on your mouse key. So left hand mouse zooms you in and right hand mouse zooms you out. Now this is a really good tool up here if you go to calibrated uh, so it's still linear because it says here L calibrated and what it does is it shows you the results of the calibration so it's a kind of dynamic process really so you can see already the vignetting has gone and so is the dust bunny. Now nothing's actually been done um, but it just shows you the result of using the calibration files that you've already loaded in. That's a kind of like dynamic process. So you can see where you are as you're going along. So you can check that your calibration frames are working before you get too far in. So I think that's a really, really good tool, actually. <clears throat> Another thing as well is in this frame, if you press details, that gives you all your fits information. Analyze stars. You want to analyze stars. Um, and that fills up here in your star density. I will just quickly click these just to show you. OK, so you can see here you've got your BPM. You've now got CA, which means calibrated. So it means that you've got files here that are able to be used as calibration files. 
and star means it's been star analyzed. And you can see here, the stars and the star density has come up as along with the FWHM. So you're now starting to fill up this information along this bottom box. So this is something that you need to do in order to um, to integrate. Again, a, a different video will cover that. I'm just showing you the, uh, the different areas that you've got. Register, <clears throat> obviously, as it suggests, what this does is it registers your your subs to each other. Um, there is one gotcha that I found, and that is down here, registration mode. If you're going to be making a mosaic, you need to put it to mosaic. If you're not, then leave it normal. So if I just do start registration, and that will just quickly register those two lights together. And you can see here they've now got reg. So we know exactly what has been done to them. <clears throat> Normalize, you'll be using that. Again, I've just used mine at default settings. You'll be using that in order to normalize the background. So you're making sure that all the lights are starting from the same point, basically, as much as they can. So it's trying to take out the difference of brightness if you've if you've got more light on a couple of subs. So it's just trying to kind of like normalize them and, and make them a, 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 an equal starting point. So we'll just normalize lights. I mean, this isn't going to take very long because there's only two lights there. Um, it doesn't take very long in general, actually. I found it quite quick. So we've normalized those. <coughs> And the next thing you would do after that is integrate. So this is something worth seeing here. Lights to stack 100%, two of two. So if you're stacking 30, you'll have 30 of 30. Um, another thing here, another gotcha. Again, here, reference. If you're doing a mosaic, you want this on full, because what that does is it uses the full field of view of your four, five, six, ten panes. If you're using reference and it just uses one, it just uses one sub as a reference point. So if you're going to use a mosaic, make sure you've got that there clicked on full. Um, I do add things in here when we come to integrating into the process, but for this purpose, we'll just integrate and not bother using any, any settings. I will cover that separately. Right, so here we can see that stack one has appeared, and that stack is a result of stacking these lights. Okay, again, you can get your details up, your fits header, and so you can just click on that, and there it is, so you can see what you've done. Now, there are things you may want to do to that. So, for example, if you want to crop it, crop is done under, bat under batch modify. Um, at the minute, if you click on it, and then you need to load in the image that you want to crop. Um, it's not at the minute set up to for you to be able to crop the image that you've got open, but I do know that that's going to change. So let's just pick on one sub, for example. So we load that sub, say we want to modify that. <coughs> okay. So that's just a, a normal light single frame. That's nothing that's been calibrated. That's nothing we've worked on before. So we want to crop it. So what you do is you minus this down because you need to do OK or cancel in this screen. And you're creating and dragging a box. Let's crop it in nicely just so you can see it. And then you go down here, open up this screen and then do crop OK. So you can see there's various bits and pieces you can do in there, nothing of which I ha I've had to use yet, but you can see that there are there are various things you, you can do. So you can crop OK, or you can just press cancel, then this whole box disappears. So let's just crop it. And we're working with fits all the way along in this. OK, so you've got your original stack here, which is that one, and you've got a processed one here, which has been cropped. OK, so each time you can go back to where you were. You can rotate here, same thing. Um, you can see here where things where things are automatically saved. So this is the file that I've just been working on, that I've just cropped. So we'll open that one again. <coughs> we will, um, we'll do it by 90 degrees there or thereabouts, and do OK.
Right, so if we look down here, we've now got a process two image. So if we click on that, you can see that one has been rotated 90 degrees to that one. So what it does, it, it does automatically save things as you do them. Um, but it saves them in the same place. You can see exactly where it saved it, just if you get a little bit lost and you can, you can pull it up from there. Now, this is a really, really good tool. This remove light pollution. Um, here you can see this is just the original one where I cropped it. And this is the one where it's now been um, moved 91 degrees clockwise. So you can see that it does tell you as you're going along exactly what you've done. OK, so in order to do the light pollution, you need to create a model. And by doing that, you're just putting a minimum of five boxes around. And the boxes can be of any shape. They just want to avoid areas of nebulosity, which isn't a problem in this image. And it doesn't matter if you've got stars in, but I wouldn't be putting a massive big star field in it. So green boxes, click calculate. Um, yellow boxes aren't an, an issue, but if you have red boxes, and then that means that your model, your, your gradient, for example, uh, needs a little bit of work on and you can change the flexibility here and then just recalculate. So say, for example, if I up the flexibility and calculate, those two yellow boxes have remained. Yellow boxes, as I said, really aren't a problem. Um, they can stay and then you can just press OK. So if you press OK, Again, you can see this is going to save automatically. It's done the business. And that is now showing down here. Um, I haven't used any of the other, other tools on that yet because I've only been working on mono images. Over on this right hand side is your processing area, which again, I haven't used because all I've been doing at the minute is um, using it for calibration, registration, integration, etc. And then pulling it into Photoshop and then doing the usual thing. But I will be looking at, at using this. So I hope that's given you an idea of the tools um, and a bit of an idea as well about the screen um, and the environment, because it is something very different to what we've been, um, certainly what I've been used to before. OK, hope that helps. Get more information on this and other astrophotography tips, articles and tutorials at the PhotographingSpace.com website. And don't forget to sign up for our weekly tips newsletter and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tutorials and video.